not only the chicken, but that sauce is just blowing my taste buds right now. It's just, it's just unbelievable. Oh man. I'm in like a, a world I've never been before. There it is. That is the best single bite that went in my mouth in 2017. It's Mark Weens, and I just want to wish you an extremely happy new year 2018. And thank you for being amazing throughout this year for watching our videos. Okay, now let's get on to the main video. Believe me, it was an incredibly hard decision, but I've narrowed it down to the top 10 best meals of 2017. And you're gonna to wanna to watch this entire video because at the end, I'm gonna share with you some of the top, some of my favorite uh, destinations that we visited this year and also some of my favorite camera gear that I've been using this year. But really quickly before we get started on the food, if you're not already subscribed, I wanna personally invite you to click the subscribe button right now. I'm gonna be sharing lots more food and travel videos uh, that you're not gonna to wanna to miss. And also there's a little bell icon. Click the bell icon and that way you'll get notified of all the future videos that I publish. Okay. Let's start with the food right now. I am in Chonburi, Thailand, about an hour and a half outside of Bangkok in the countryside. This is a restaurant that is well known. It's actually in the middle of nowhere, but they are known for serving traditional and especially jungle Thai food. And this is a jungle pig, a wild boar, then with a very interesting ingredient, which is pineapple shoots. That's my first bite and it's a winner. That ratio of minced bird to herb. For lunch today, I am eating at a Filipino roadside restaurant. This is one of the restaurants that I am most looking forward to eating at. This place is on the corner of the road. There's a mechanic shop kind of surrounding. It's a, it's a great environment and the Filipino food they serve here looks absolutely incredible. Kind of rich, kind of oily stew with a sour taste and then that meat is so tender. That's an amazing shot. Got it? Yep. The entire ribeye, the best of the best Kobe beef. What really fascinates me is how he works both of his hands together, uh, but doing separate tasks. He, he does it with just like immaculate precision and just pure love. This one, close your eyes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So talk to tuna. Here it is, the otoro, the fatty tuna belly. And this is one of the most beautiful things that I maybe I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, yeah, you said that you're going to see him in Bangkok, right? <laughs> that is undoubtedly one of the single best bites. You cannot explain that sensation in words at all. Oh, wow. been making the most awesome handmade kebabs that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> that is gonna be one of the world's greatest aromas, I can already guarantee. That meat just looks insane. Little meatball shapes and little one biters. You can actually see all of that parsley within it as well and how it's caramelized. The meat has caramelized on the edges where it was grilled. Just wondrous. That, that slow grill over the fire, giving it that wonderful, smoky, greasy, like umami flavor. <laughs> oh my god. That's insane. Mm. Where are you from? Is it okay? USA. Uh, from USA, my wife is from Thailand. Thailand? Thailand, yes. You, you? Thailand also. America. America. Arizona. Arizona. Mountain goat. Why is here? Because I love to eat. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. Really amazing. Wow. Creta food. No Creta food. No souvlaki, Muzaka, Pastisio, sir. Si bien, aspetica, fagita. 
He's such a nice, friendly, passionate guy. You can tell how he has, he, he pours his love into his cooking. The first is stewed Cretan mountain goat. Look at those chunks of all natural meat. Oh, look at, okay, I'm just gonna pick up one of these guys right here. Look at that. It has an amazing, like, almost herb flavor to it. Wow, that's spectacular. We're gonna eat the traditional style where we just all dig into the central platter. Oh, it even did the... <laughs> Look at the way this, this lamb just falls apart. Oh, that lamb is just crazy tender. Mm? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's just ultimate tenderness. You've got the fatty juices flowing. Oh, that's flavorful. So the red sauce is like a tomato based It's a basically sauce. a tomato, tomato puree. This is a place to come to eat, eat ayam bakar taliwang, which is grilled chicken, um, lombok style. They have the, the sweet one, the sweet soy sauce one, and then they have the spicy one, and they have the super pedas, which is the extra pedas, which is the extra spicy. And that's the one we are eating. He literally like scooped on a ladle of just pure chili sauce onto our chicken. And I think I'll just break off that drumstick, kind of dissect this entire chicken. The chicken actually is so good that it doesn't need any extra sauce, but but dunking it into this, this sauce just brings it to the next notch. It's like adding an explosion to fire. And that's what you want. Oh man. That's what you call explosive flavor. <laughs> okay, this one is the skirt. Oh, oh wow. This is a course that I have been looking forward to this entire meal. This is the Wagyu cutlet sandwich. The beef is perfect. You can see all of the lines in the beef. It's bloody and juicy. It's It has a crispy layer. Even the toast is just perfect. And he was explaining to us, it's all about the balance. I'm certainly already loving the ratio of beef to bread, and it is just like, it's oozing with juices. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You literally like slide through the beef. It's ridiculous. That is the most insane omelet I've ever seen in my life, and she's making it burrito style. You should have seen how much shellless crab meat she added in there, and she is literally taking care of it like a baby. Because her process of making the omelet uh, will ensure that it doesn't soak up too much oil, even though it looks like it's gonna be a, a little bit of an oil sponge. Well, she's taking it out now, so now cop. There's only two eggs in this entire thing, so you can imagine how much crab is in here. And her method of making this omelet, she ensured us that it doesn't soak up that much oil. Can I pick it up like a burrito? Those nuggets of crab literally melt in your mouth. And the egg is merely there to hold it all to, to hold the crab together. This is one of those meals where I'm starting to, to shake a little bit because I'm so excited for to taste all of the dishes. This is also a really interesting dish, which is a pine needle salad. It's absolutely spectacular. When you come to Yunnan, when you come to Dali, this is a dish you have to seek out. I'm just blown away by this entire meal. But that was such a almost actually impossible decision to make, narrowing it down to a top 10 list. And I didn't feel that I could cover all of the highlights of the year within those top 10 meals. So I also wanted to share with you some of the best travel experiences that I had this entire year, which of course also included food. On the sleepy coast of Kep, Cambodia, 
you'll find one of the world's best crab markets. To eat like a local, you choose your crab directly from ocean baskets, boil them right before your eyes, and feast on all you can eat crab within the market. If you love crab, this is the Cambodian food trip where your dreams will come to life. We're gonna do a lot of crunching and munching in this meal. The shells are really, really soft. Oh yes, all right. Okay, cheers. Cheers, Chill first bite. Mm. Mm. Oh wow, the freshness mm. just like lights up your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Well, nuggets just nuggets just pop out. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Just nuggets of crab just slide out with ease, like you're pulling a knife out of a sheath. He really finely sliced the banana stock. Then he added a spoonful of salt, and then he really mixed mixed it up and kind of squashed it, massaged it with his hands, and then he squeezed it all. And then he added in the, the classic uh, Balinese spices, the, okay. the mix of turmeric and galangal and ginger, and he added in a few more herbs and spices, and then he added in a few, a few pieces of chicken, chopped it up, chicken in there to, to make the, the soup stock. The presentation is just awesome. And this is the ares we call it. Mm. It's so incredibly good. <laughs> this one is akami. Oh, you don't need teeth to eat that. <laughs> no. Tokyo, Japan. There's no question it's one of the world's top food cities. Today, I'm taking you on an exclusive sushi journey where we're going to see the entire sushi cycle, from the fish auction, to the tuna slicing, to eating sushi right out of the fingers of the chef. Get ready to witness the art of the best sushi in the world. We have just arrived to Dong Lianhua. It's uh, an ancient Muslim village. This is a picture perfect setting. It's gorgeous. The courtyard, the scenery. On the bottom, you will see it's all shredded radish as well as more of that same dressing and it's just, it's just filled. So I think you can kind of get a little bit of everything with that beef. Oh wow, that is sensational. had this idea that if we come to the fish market, if we could find somebody to, to, if we could buy some fish or something interesting and have somebody cook it for us, this would be the ultimate fish market experience in Sichon. I never thought I was gonna come to Germany to watch surfing. This entire old city of Jerusalem is just a maze of alleys and ancient lanes. You'll get whiffs of coffee, you'll smell the za'atar, an overdose of, of all things that you can see and smell and hear. Ice fields and through the jungle. Okay. We're gonna start walking in the water, so we gotta walk upstream. This is beautiful. Yes, I love it. Pure tropical Lombok beauty here.
Okay, and finally to end this best of 2017 video, I just wanted to share with you some of my favorite camera gear. I've been using Lumix cameras now for at least a couple of years, uh, but it was sometime in the middle of 2017 when the Lumix GH5 got finally released and I bought it a couple, pretty, pretty quickly after it was released. But I've been really happy with the GH5. It's an amazing camera, uh, especially for its 4K abilities. Uh, and then also you can you have many different options uh, slow motion really high frame rate vlogging. the one downside is that the autofocus is a little bit can be a little bit slow uh, so vlogging can be you kind of got to figure it out but anyway the GH5 it's been an amazing camera I've loved using it this year as for lenses and I do like to switch out lenses when I can when I have time or when I'm not lazy uh, like the lens I'm using right now it's a it's a really sharp, nice bokeh lens. Uh, but this is my go-to lens. This is the lens I use for almost all the food videos. It's an 8 to 18 Lumix Leica lens. You can see how dirty it is from all of the, the food that I've eaten with my hands and fingers and then switched the lens and zoomed in and out. Uh, but this lens, I've used it thoroughly throughout this year. It's an awesome lens. Okay, for audio, uh, this is the main microphone that I've used. It's a Shure VP lens hopper. What does it say? VP83, I think, a lens hopper. Uh, anyway, I used to use Rode microphones and Rode, the right Rode microphones are very good, but I recently, this year, I switched over to the Shure microphone. I like the size. It's smaller. I like the build quality. Uh, it feels a little more sturdy and I've been very happy with the sound quality as well. Probably in the middle of 2017 as well, I needed a new phone, and I before had an iPhone, was it an iPhone 6? I had an iPhone 6, but I needed a new phone, and so I decided to buy a Huawei P10. And so I'm still using the Huawei P10, and overall I've been really pleased with it. The camera in particular is really good. I think it's a great value phone for your money, and this is the phone I've been using most of the year. There's one more of my favorite camera gear of the year, and I waited a long time to get it. I didn't, I, I always thought it was gonna be such a hassle, uh, and so I waited for a long time, and after using it for a couple of months now, I still think it's a huge hassle trying to vlog, trying to get uh, the shots from this this gadget, and doing all sorts of things, multitasking. It's a, it's a real it's a real challenge. But at the same time, it's so much fun. I thoroughly enjoy it, and I love the different perspectives that it offers. And I'm talking about a drone. Though so every time I post a video uh, that includes includes drone footage, I always get a lot of questions about which drone I got. So here's the drone. I got a Mavic Pro. Um, this is when it's all folded out and ready to go. Uh, but then the beauty of a Mavic is that it folds in like this and you can put it just within your backpack, within your camera bag. It's that small. Here's some perspective uh, and it's not too heavy. However, I do have to tell you that it is adding an extra thing and it's, it's sometimes a little bit of a challenge trying to vlog. Uh, take care of the baby, eat, and fly the drone all at the same time. But it's so much fun. That's a good cup of coffee. But again, I wanna say a huge thank you for your amazing support this year and for watching our videos. We're grateful for your support. And hope you enjoyed this best of 2017 review. Oh, if you have a favorite meal or can think of the best food dish that you ate in 2017. I want you to leave a comment below right now. I'd love to hear from you. And yeah, I hope you had a wonderful year and I hope you have a prosperous and happy new year 2018. Okay, thanks again for watching. Remember to click subscribe if you're not already subscribed and to click the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. I'll see you in 2018 for lots more food and travel videos.